Let's start now our discussion on the topic of motion along a straight line. First, some definition of terms. Displacement is change in position. We have an object has position with respect to the origin. Initial position x naught. If the object changes in position from x naught to x, the change in position of the object is delta x, final x minus initial x. Delta x is referred to as the displacement of the object. Change in position of the object. Unit, unit of length, meter, centimeter, millimeter, kilometer, inches, feet, and so on. Be able to convert from one unit to the other. Be able to convert from metric to English system and vice versa. When we take, or when we take a look rather, how fast the position of the object is changing. We have what is referred to as rate of change of position or the velocity of the object. And rate of change of position is defined as dx over dt. So velocity v is equal to dx over dt. Dx over dt may be seen as differentiation of x with respect to time, or it may be seen as very small change in position dx divided by very small change in time dt. And of course, if the position can change with respect to time, the Velocity can also change with respect to time. You have the rate of change of velocity or acceleration. And rate of change of velocity is defined as dv over dt. A is equal to dv over dt. This may be seen as differentiation of velocity with respect to time. Or, it may be seen as very small change in velocity dv divided by very small change in time dt. So, a is equal to dv over dt. So, you have displacement, velocity, acceleration, displacement, unit, meters, centimeters, millimeters, kilometers, and so on. Velocity, unit. Meters per second, centimeters per second, kilometers per hour, and so on. Acceleration, unit, meters per second squared, centimeters per second squared, and so on. Motion along a straight line, or basically what we refer to as kinematics, is the study of motion relating displacement, Velocity, acceleration, and time. So, kinematics, the study of motion of the object, basically looking at how the displacement, how the change in position of the object is related with respect to time. So, you have velocity and you have acceleration. Some notes for this course. For convenience, when we say straight line motion or motion along a straight line, the motion will either be along the x-axis or along the y-axis. As such, we have two possible directions. We have the positive direction and the negative direction. For the x-axis, positive direction is positive x, whereas negative direction is negative y. 
a negative x. Sorry about that. For the y-axis, positive direction is positive y, negative direction is negative y. Now, in some problems, you might encounter the term deceleration. Deceleration is when an object is slowing down. It does not necessarily mean negative acceleration, although many books will term it as negative acceleration. That's because in those books, motion of the object is considered by default to be heading in the positive direction. Deceleration occurs when acceleration is opposite in direction as the motion of the object. So if the motion of the object is considered positive, deceleration must be heading in the negative direction for there to be deceleration. But note that negative acceleration simply means acceleration is heading towards negative direction. It does not necessarily mean deceleration. Case in point, Say, along the axis, we have two possible directions, positive x and negative x. If the motion is heading along positive x, acceleration must be negative for there to be deceleration. But if the motion of the object is heading in the negative direction, negative x direction, the acceleration must be heading towards positive x for there to be deceleration. So you have positive acceleration and yet you have deceleration. Okay, so please be careful with the term deceleration. In many cases, acceleration is negative, you have deceleration. That's because in those cases, the motion of the object is heading in the positive direction. But not always. Okay? Unless otherwise stated, initial position is considered to be zero. X not considered to be zero. That's why in many cases, X is synonymous to delta X because initial position is considered to be zero. You'll recall that delta X is x minus x naught. So if x naught is 0, initial position is 0, delta x displacement is just equal to x. The same goes for initial time. In many instances, initial time is considered to be 0. So unless otherwise stated by the problem, consider the initial position and initial time of the object to be equal to 0. The type of motion of an object that an object will experience or undergo depends upon the acceleration of the object. If the acceleration is constant, it may be constant at zero or it may be constant at a non-zero value. If the acceleration is constant at zero value, you have uniform motion. For uniform motion, the velocity is constant and it's just equal to delta x divided by delta t equal to average velocity. On the other hand, if the acceleration is constant at a non-zero value, the object is said to be undergoing uniform acceleration or uniformly accelerated motion. For uniform acceleration, you have four equations to choose from. Four equations by which you may analyze the problem. You have final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. You have x, displacement x, is equal to initial velocity v naught times time plus one-half 
AT squared. Then you have V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2AX. And then you have average velocity is equal to final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2. So the average of the two velocities. Average velocity is also equal to delta x divided by delta time. Delta t. If the acceleration is not constant, the object is said to be experiencing non-uniform acceleration. For non-uniform acceleration, you go back to our basic definitions of velocity and acceleration. Acceleration is equal to dv over dt and velocity is equal to dx over dt. And depending on the situation, depending on the problem, you might have to differentiate or integrate the equation that will be given by the problem. For non-uniform acceleration, one clue or one clue that you have a non-uniform acceleration problem is that the problem itself will provide you with an equation that is that will be describing the motion of the object. And depending on what is being required by the problem, what is being asked for by the problem, you will either have to differentiate the equation provided by the problem or integrate the equation provided by the problem. So please review your basic differentiation and basic integration. You might need that when it comes to non-uniform acceleration. And that's it for now. And that's it for our discussion for this video. In the next video, we'll continue our discussion on motion along a straight line. So thank you for watching.